Welcome back, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, I get to do one of my favorite distilleries, Highland Park. And I'm going to bring you the Valkyrie. 45.9% ABV. Let me get this thing poured, I'll tell you a little bit about it. Oh, I forgot about this one. Not only does it have a, uh, a cork, but it almost screws down right at the end, which is kind of unique. I don't know if you can see the little threads there on the top, but it got me the first time, it got me the second time, and it has gotten me every time, including this one, when I tried to open it up. So the Valkyrie is part of this series um, where the artwork was designed by, I believe, a Danish gentleman named Jim... We're going to call him Jim L because I'm surely not going to say that correctly. Uh, and it is does say Denmark. Um, apparently this gentleman can trace his ancestry all the way back to the time of the long boats and Vikings, axes, uh, time that uh, we didn't have this great whiskey, but now we do. And we have a cool bottle with a cool name. This bottle, by the way, is completely black. You cannot see through it. So it's really hard to guess how much is in there. And on the bottom, it has a little indentation, but there's a dimple that kind of goes up in the middle of it, which also kind of throws off your fill level. Uh, very similar like the Black Art or any of the uh, Brooklady Octomores. So, a little bit about this Valkyrie. I believe it is natural color. And it is made with peat that is, well, twice as much peated barley as in the typical Highland Park. So, I guess the typical Highland Park, I believe, is like a one to four ratio as far as the amount of peated barley compared to non-peated barley they use in the mixes for they put in the mash drum. So this one is twice as much. So my math says it's half peated barley and half barley that's not peated. So a peated your Highland Park. Um, I think you see anything else I want to tell you about this. Cool design on the bottle. Probably added a lot to the cost. This is a not age statement. Um, so I'm guessing that the majority of the whiskeys in here are young, you know, under 10 years old. And the Valkyrie... Tell you a little bit about Norse mythology, which is the mythology that the Vikings were believed in. Um, apparently, it's some type of an angel that was like on the battlefield and like the bravest people. The Valkyrie would like swoop down and catch them in the moment of death and bring them up to Valhalla where they got to start a whole new life swinging axes at people. So, um, it's been described as a warrior's angel, warrior or angel, demon. I don't know. Let's find out. Highland Park Valkyrie. Whew. Smoke right away. But unmistakable smoke. Easily the smokiest Highland Park I have ever tried. Yeah, I would say it's at least twice as smoky, if not more. But in a good way. Like, it doesn't, like, completely over overpower the scenario. Now, if you're not a big fan of, of super peated whiskeys like on Isla, um, perhaps it, this is a lot of smoke to you. It's quite a bit more than the standard Highland Parks, but for me, I enjoy it. And a, and a honey smoke. That heather honey smoke that Highland Park is just, to me, what I get off all of them, that heather honey. And it's just more of it. And a citrus note coming up. Oranges, probably. Orange peel. Maybe a bit of plum. A lot of citrus now coming up. And you know, I'm getting apricots. And I've said that on a few reviews lately that I've been getting a lot of apricot on a few whiskeys. They were port pipe finished or port pipe partially matured whiskeys, but... This one, I don't believe any has any port pipes in it. But I'm getting that nice apricot. And a little bit darker, a little bit stronger of a citrus, like an orange peel, a little bit of plum, and some smoke. But that smoke is just a honeyed smoke. Man. I gotta tell you, my expectations were not high um, on this whiskey. Non age statement, Highland Parks have been more hit than mess with me. But uh, my buddy Keith um, at the Malted Mad Cave, 
If uh, you're not familiar with him, put a thing to his channel right there. Um, check him out. Very good whiskey reviewer. Does his homework. Um, spends a lot of time, re you know, researching casks, researching the finer points of how these whiskeys are made, more so than I do. And he has a great nose and great palate for whiskey as well. So check him out. Always a good guy. A couple times I've had it here on my channel. But if this is the first time you guys stopped by, this is a bottle that he donated to me. In a healthy amount, by the way. The fact that it was so dark, I don't realize if you knew kind of where the fill level was. But, I mean, it was, it was a strong fill level. And he knows I'm a Highland Park fan. Like, he's a Long Rose, Spring Bank, Hazelburn fan. Okay, man, I could smell this literally for 15 or 20 minutes. It's that good. A super smoky Highland Park. Just wow. Just think, if you ever had a Laphroaig 10, and then you went to, the, you finally had a chance to have the cast strength Laphroaig 10, it's that difference. It's, if you had the regular 12 or the 18, the amount of smoke on that compared to this, just, this is through the roof. All right, first set. Mm -hmm. The smoke did not fade on the palate, right there. Smoke, plums, um, vanilla, and it's just settling into a nice chocolate, light chocolate. Not quite milk chocolate, but almost like a diluted dark chocolate. Good finish, long. And then just at the end, honey and smoke. Just like on, on the nose, it was smoke with a little bit of honey. Honey and smoke is like the last linger that you get on the aftertaste. Very nice. All right, so I threw a little bit of water in it, seeing how it changed, if it changed at all. Smoke still right there. The water helped bring out the citrus and the plum note. Now I'm not getting as much apricot. Now that I put water in there, it's definitely that orange citrus peel and plum. Maybe almost a light raisin. With water, smoke took a step back, but the chocolate is there just almost at the beginning. As soon as it hits your tongue, second later, chocolate comes in. Rich, velvety chocolate. Um, almost like a chocolate ice cream that, the, it's like a chocolate ice cream cone and the sun's been hitting it too long. Excellent whiskey, excellent whiskey. Um, very pleased with this non-age statement, Highland Park. I had a, um, Highland Park Fire, I was not, I was not pleased with it, um, especially for the cost. And I passed it buying the dark and the light because of the price. Around here, they're roughly 300 bucks. But I'll tell you what, if I could get my hands on, on this Valkyrie, I definitely would. Um, I saw it online somewhere for 70 euro. I don't know if Keith paid for it. I usually lowball Keith's whiskeys for whatever reason, or just whiskeys in general. I, I think it's part of my denial as far as how much I spent on Scotch whiskey that I just think to myself, oh, it wasn't that expensive. But Keith probably spent, I would think, $100, $120 to get this bottle. Maybe. Um, but even at that price, I'd buy it. I love Highland Park. And I love smoky whiskeys. And this is a super smoky Highland Park. So that's your thing. I would try it. If you guys have, let me know what you think in the comment section. i got to leave you with a whiskey score before I go. And I'm going to give it a very good 88 out of 100. It's one of the better 88s. Um, I do think it is a young whiskey. Um, I do think it could benefit from a little bit more ABV, but overall a really pleasant experience. And the smoke on this one for me really sets it apart from the other non-age statement in Highland Parks. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this whiskey review. Tell me what you think in the comment section. And until next time, I wish you happy drinking. See ya.